Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast With the spotlight on section hikers And I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the truth and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods Head over the river Through the woods Hello everybody and welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast Your premier podcast with the spotlight on section hikers And I am your host, Julie Jester Gayhart. I am back this week putting the Section Hiker Spotlight on my guest, Jacqueline Holzman, or also known in the hiking community as RVA Hiker Girl. I've been corresponding with RVA Hiker Girl for several months via Instagram, and I've really enjoyed her YouTube channel that focuses on her section hiking and camping adventures. But more than anything, I enjoy her enthusiasm and spirit for the hiking community and even more specifically, her love and passion for section hiking the Appalachian Trail. So much so that I hope to have her back on co-hosting some episodes with me here in the next couple of months. Thanks as always for joining me for this week's episode and now on to getting to know more about RVA Hiker Girl and what makes her so passionate about following those white blazes we all know and love. All right, you guys, welcome back to the podcast, and please welcome with me the one and only RVA Hiker Girl. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jester. It is great to have you on here, and okay, automatically, I'm going to go ahead and tell a story. So <laughs> <laughs> RVA and I have been communicating, I don't know how long on Instagram now. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think it's been almost two years because- At least. Just so you guys know, RVA reached out to me and said, there is this little girl who is out section hiking the Appalachian Trail, and her name is Hiking with Pigtails, and you have got to have her on your show. So I did, and that led to Carissa, who is now co-hosting. So something about those six degrees of separation, and now, RVA Hiker Girl, you are on the show, so thank you for that. Awesome. Awesome, and... You and I recently, uh, we've actually been communicating a lot, and I've decided you're going to be on the show doing some co-hosting, yay. I'm excited about that. And you guys, you've heard me say that Austin uh, sends me good notes. I mean, Austin, I'm sorry. RVA <laughs> Hiker Girl takes the cake. Now, when she sends notes, it is a dissertation about what's going to be happening and what's going on. So she is very well prepared. <laughs> But one of the things that caught my eye right away um, when I was looking at some things that we were going to be talking about in your glorious notes, you have an entire section on countless reasons to love section hiking. <laughs> and I want to give people a little bit of taste of that. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later. 
but I want people to kind of get to know RVA and your story. And one of the main things you wrote and you and I've talked about is you said your passion for the outdoors started in your childhood. So let's start there. Let's go back to childhood. Tell us what that's all about. Sure. Well, I grew up on a 40 acre farm in rural Powhatan County, Virginia. And my grandfather also had a 60 acre farm. So basically I had a hundred acres as a kid to run around and explore at my Liberty. And basically I was outside as a kid until the back porch light came on, like a lot of us <laughs> back from that time, right? <laughs> oh my God. You literally took me back to that <laughs> age of like, when the porch light comes on, come home. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that was my signal. I need to come home. But until then I was going to stay outside as long as I possibly could. And I might be out there catching lightning bugs and butterflies and little jars and stacking them up on the fence. Or you might see me building forts in the woods or gosh, I used to take the tractor and drive to the mailbox pretty much on a daily basis. <laughs> and that was a hoot. Cause I was like eight or nine years old driving a tractor. So I thought, man, that's a lot of fun. Well, let me ask you this, that now that you have perspective and, and that awesome childhood, uh, man, I could, I could ask you a thousand questions <laughs> just about that. Do you think as a kid, you had any idea how awesome that was? I don't think I've realized it at the time. I think it takes getting older and living a little bit of life to have some retrospect on how you grew up to really make you appreciate it. But in that moment, everybody was living like that where I live. So I didn't really think it was any big thing. So you just mentioned something that about having retrospect and life happening. And obviously, uh, you don't live on the farm anymore. And, you know, you probably went off and started doing your thing. And, you know, your passion for the outdoors kind of came back to you not that long ago. Uh, and you said to me, over the years, life was happening, things were happening, mm -hmm. but you had an unsettling. So after that amazing childhood and life, there was an unsettling. So if you don't mind, let's talk about that. Sure. So after, you know, we moved from the farm in my high school years and we moved from 40 acres to one acre, which was a huge shock. Oh, man. And I didn't realize how big of a shock it really was at the time. But then I went off and, you know, life happened. I went to college, got married, had kids and something just always felt like in my heart, something was missing. And I just couldn't put my finger on exactly what that was. So you go through life and you go through like different changes. And then I went outside for a hike for a first day um, of the year hike. And, you know, you see that on social media and everything. They hype it up. Well, I was going to ask you outside. what prompted that? Like, did you just one day say, I'm going back outside or just a random, probably looking on social media and seeing other uh, Instagram accounts or Facebook accounts saying, hey, get outside on the first day and go, you know, experience the outdoors. And I did that. And when I got out there, it was almost like I was wearing glasses and I had so much clarity for the first time in so many years. And I just kept wanting to have that same feeling again and again that you know, from being outside and being so happy, like in that moment. So I really just decided and made a pact with myself that I was going to start getting outside so I could have that good feeling that I had. And so I went ahead and signed up that year for the 52 hike challenge. And I think I did probably like 65 hikes that year. Okay. It's the 52 hike challenge and you did 65 hikes. Yes. So we could already tell year. with your awesome show notes and now you've overachieved on the 52 hike challenge. <laughs> you're motivated. You're, you're that right. type A personality. Yes. Yes. That's, that's very true. And then the next year I'm like, well, how am I going to uh, hype this up some more and do more? <laughs> and so I did the 365 mile challenge and I think I ended up doing almost 700 miles and, you know, over that 350 miles. And I knew I was, but I, I just didn't set the bar high enough. I don't think for that particular year, but um, 
after that, I just, it was just kind of stuck. Like it's stuck inside. And I just had to continue getting outside. And that led into camping and backpacking and kayaking and just anything I could find to get myself outside. I need an excuse. Like, okay, you want to invite me to go on a trip? Okay, I'm coming. Where are we going? <laughs> so I'm assuming, okay, let's get out the RVA hiker girl. So tell us about your trail name. And I'm assuming once you tell us your trail name, uh, well, I'll ask you that. So tell us about your trail name. So my trail name, you know, I started out with local hikes in the town that I live and that's Richmond, Virginia. So the acronym for Richmond is RVA. And so I would get out to local downtown Richmond hikes on Bell Island and uh, gosh, the Buttermilk Trail and all of the trails down, uh, downtown. And people just kind of started calling me RVA Hiker Girl because they would always see me out doing all these hikes and that just kind of stuck. And when did, so was it at that same time I'm trying to make the connection. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go back. Because um, as a teacher, I always go back. And that's <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I do on the podcast. Okay, so we have the amazing childhood. Then you went off to college. You, you know, you got married. You have kids. And then somewhere along the way, you reconnect with the outdoors. And you're getting out there. The 52 hike challenge turns into the 65 hike. <laughs> and then the 365 miles turns into the 700 and a lot of that is in your local area mm -hmm. um, there in Richmond. You get your trail name, RVA Hiker Girl. So when does RVA Hiker Girl make this transition to you're going to start a YouTube channel and you're going to get out on the Appalachian Trail? When does all that, how does all that connect? Well, the first couple of years was just like local hikes and just really exploring because that was my introduction to hiking. I had never hiked before. So I kind of started small and just kind of got big over time. But I think what really led to me, to the channel for sure, uh, my YouTube channel was that my mom had passed away. And that was really a life changing thing for me. And it really, really instilled in my heart how important that outdoors was not physically for me, but emotionally and internal for me, because I needed to find a way to get over the loss of her. And, you know, it was crushing just like it would be with anyone. And I went to the outdoors kind of to seek refuge, to get away from everybody and everything. And when you're out there alone with your thoughts, nature has a way of forcing you to deal with the issues that you're having, whatever they may be. And by getting outside and being alone and doing something hard and backpacking, it really forced me to get out of the funk that I was in and really just start coping with her loss. And really, my mom would have given me a swift kick in the rear end if she would have known, <laughs> you know, how low that I was in the moment. And so that was kind of like the turning point for me with, okay, the outdoors that I have, you know, had as a kid and now I'm revisiting as an adult really just it's my home now. It's not just a place. It's not a destination. The outdoors is my home. And so once that kind of clicked, then I hit the ground running with backpacking and then starting my YouTube channel. And it just kind of went on all different directions from there. So let's go back to um, the outdoors is your home. I want you to expand on that a little bit. Is it a feeling? Is it nature itself can you put your finger on it where you why you call that home I think because as a kid I felt so carefree and no stresses when I was outside and running around barefoot and fishing and just doing all of those things and I think as an adult we seek things that really speak to us and it brings back all of those childhood memories that I had, those happy memories, the 
the times with my family, the times with all of the crazy animals I had on my farm. And I think every time I go out there to the outdoors, whether it's just a local park or it's the Appalachian Trail, I kind of get all of those childhood feelings kind of coming back. And it kind of like puts, not that I'm in a bad place, but it puts me in a happy place from from all of those memories. And I think it's just grown and grown as an adult with my appreciation for what the outdoors does with just clarifying your mind and just putting yourself at peace. And it just, it takes me back to home back when I was a kid. Yeah. And so that's why it feels like every time I go out there that it is home for me. Do you feel close to your mom out there? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, a, a lot of my childhood memories is my mom out pruning the cherry trees and we're out bailing hay out on the farm and stuff. So those were times I definitely connected uh, with my mom out there. And I do, I do feel closer to her. Sometimes, you know, I will look and see a, a bird and I'm, you know, I'm just kind of wondering, okay, is that her sign, you know, for me? And, you know, it just makes you just have a different appreciation, I think, for life. For me in particular, I started appreciating the little things out there, the natural things, and how important that is for me personally, and how much I need that. I need to be out there and experience, you know, nature. And yeah, it just, it just gives me a sense of clarity that I just don't get anywhere else in my life except from when I'm outdoors. And it sounds like to me, not only is it home, you know, it's where you're comfortable in your heart, but it's also, mm -hmm. I mean, for people that watch your YouTube channel and what you've created, it's your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's, it's what you, you strive to do. So I think it's great. Um, and I, I do believe that um, we get signs out in nature from people that are no longer with us. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I have hiked with people that, you know, talk to their loved ones mm -hmm. when they're out in nature and, you know, they get a sense of peace and, you know, maybe something's been on their mind and they go out on a hike and they get it out and they take care of it. I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, an awesome way to connect so where does that lead trying to get over to the Appalachian Trail? Did you know, I, obviously you knew about the trail and now I would almost say you're more obsessed about the Appalachian Trail than I am. So <laughs> that could be the case. No, I think you are. And I, I think it's awesome. So how did that journey start? You got the channel, you, you know, you're doing awesome things. Talk us through that. Well, you know, I've always been a researcher. And when I start researching trails and I can't find information, it kind of drives me crazy. And so <laughs> I started going on YouTube and I found so much more information on YouTube than you could find, you know, on Google or you know, at, at, at all trails, you know, when you're looking for information. And so I started researching just hikes. And then I kind of started noticing videos on the Appalachian Trail. And I kind of researched more and more and realizing that I have 550 plus miles in the state of Virginia that I have right out of my back door that I can go and explore. So I started doing, you know, the popular hikes like McAfee Knob and and really, I just kind of started getting hooked the more and more I was on the AT. And I started watching some through hikers and more and more section hikers. And I thought, well, why can't I do that? Why can't I set this long term goal up for myself with 2,200 miles of the AT through 14 states? And that's a lifelong goal that I can be working on and being in the outdoors and being around like-minded people. So I just kind of started hiking more and more. And I decided I was going to go do a solo up in Maryland. And I did the 40 miles in Maryland. And I think it was three nights and four days. And it just kind of progressed <laughs> for more and more sections. You get like pulled in by the AT and it just 
it's just such a great place to be on the trail. And it just really, I always say I have a love affair with, with the AT. I mean, the AT is kind of like my boyfriend, like in a way, like, (laughs) you know, you love it so much. And when the AT is not around, like you long to be there, just like you would long, you know, to be, you know, with a spouse or, or a boyfriend. And so, you know, every time I see a white blaze or an AT sign, it's like your heart just starts beating and you just get so excited and like the butterflies come back. And it's like every single time you get that feeling. I know you get, you get nerves. I I still get it today. And does your husband understand he's second? (laughs) I think so. (laughs) (laughs) I laugh, but I'm serious. (laughs) Well, you know, Jaybird has developed a love for the trail as well. So I think it's something that we enjoy doing together. And at first it was kind of like my thing. And then over time he started hearing my stories and seeing my reaction and he wanted to go explore and see what in the world I was talking about and what I was so crazy about. So why section hiking? Why do you love, okay, you guys, what I say, she does have a thousand reasons why it's awesome to be a section hiker. (laughs) She does. And I think it's great. And I want you, let's go through them, you know, read us what you got on there. A thousand, it's not a thousand, but it's several reasons why you love section hiking. Right. Well, I mean, you can do it any way that you want to do it. That's the beauty of being a section hiker. There is literally a thousand different ways that you can go about hiking the Appalachian Trail through the 14 different states. You can start where you want to start. You can go out as long as you want to. You can day hike it. You can sleep on the trail in a shelter or go sleep in your car, go to a campground, uh, wherever you want to be that's around the trail. You can go sleep at a hostel, which is really cool if you wanted to. You can leapfrog your car, which I have been doing as of late. You can go north. You can go south. You can do a a harder track. You can do an easier track, depending on which direction that you want to go. You can skip around and do different sections or just keep connecting the dots as you go. And that's typically where my mind likes to see and I think it's gratifying when you connect the dots on a map and you can look at that map and be like yeah I really did walk that far I walked that far and I think that's a huge accomplishment Um, and I just don't think there's any right or wrong way to really do it and I think people get so caught up sometimes in gear and and all of that. And I just don't think that, well, first of all, the AT doesn't care what kind of gear that you mm-hmm. have. Nope. The outdoors doesn't. It's about you going out on the trail and hiking it the way that you want to hike it and enjoying it in the way that you want to, whether you want to take a thousand pictures and videos like I tend to do <laughs> and look around, you know, at all the different plants and animals or stay as long as you want to at a view. Or if it's a day you just want to make miles and you just have your head down and you're just going, there's just no right or wrong way that you can really hike the AT. And, you know, I, (laughs) I like the AT on all the four seasons. Like people think I'm crazy right now for hiking in the wintertime. Although I've been loving your uh, Shenandoah uh, videos because I've only seen Shenandoah with all the leaves, all the trees. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can see so far in the wintertime, you can see the contours of the landscape. And you just can't see that when all the leaves are on the trees, like blocking all the different views um, that you uh, come across. And, you know, I think I like section hiking so much, too, because I think it helps me learn so much about myself. And more so than just a regular day hike that I might take someplace, the AT in itself, it's hard. I mean, it's not easy always hiking. And I think the harder something is, and you come out the other side, and you've accomplished it, and you've achieved the goal that you've set out for yourself, I just think it really, me personally, gives me just such a great sense of accomplishment. And I love it's that addicting. feeling. It's addicting. It is. That's what, that's partially what I think is addicting is, um, 
you know, sometimes I find myself, I don't know what to do because I've completed the AT and I've almost completed it again. And I'm scared because it's like, you know, I just love it so much. Um, And I've often tried to define why. And then I decided I'm tired of defining this why. I'm just going to go hike if I want to. Right, right. And I think, too, it's just that sense of just being carefree. And it takes me back again to my childhood, all of the things that I loved about being on the outdoors. And when I get out there, we talked about the butterflies and everything. I feel like that kid again, you know, just not having a plan When you go out there, you go sleep where you want to sleep, whether you want to stay in a stealth site or a shelter or, or whatever. And just, you know, just that sense of freedom that you have. And I think that's what's addicting for me, you know, not having a plan, because as you know, Julie, I am a planner. (laughs) So I don't know. I I find it hard to believe you don't have a plan. (laughs) No, I have, I I research, of course. Okay, Okay. Research. Yeah, I've got it in quotes. We've got research. <laughs> <laughs> I research the shelters. I know what's coming up. I know what the terrain is, but I don't have to go at a certain point and stop. I can keep going if I want to, if I want to challenge myself more, or I can stop and just kind of talk to all of the wonderful people that have common interests, such as myself, the love for the AT that you meet along the way. So yeah, of course I have a plan, but it's nice to sometimes <laughs> let go of the plan and just hike and just exactly. let your body just stop when your body wants to stop. Yeah. So speaking of plans, <laughs> what are your section hiking goals this year? Well, tell us what you've completed and tell us, give us a look ahead. Sure. So I have finished the Appalachian Trail in the state of Maryland, uh, in West Virginia, And I have completed all of Virginia down to the Ty River, which is right before the priests. Now, I had skipped the shanties, the 100 miles of the shanties. So I went back and I'm currently finishing up the last 30 miles. I'm kind of stuck because the roads are closed. Skyline Drive is closed, so I can't get back. But once that's open, I'm going to finish that out. And then I'll start heading south uh, from the priest and finish up Virginia. And for sure, I'm going to Trail Days, Virginia Trail Days this year, because I haven't been able to go the last two years. So I am definitely going to Trail Days uh, this year. And then I probably will go to one of the shorter states, uh, maybe Georgia, because Georgia's only around 75 miles, or maybe New Jersey or Connecticut, and maybe skip up there. Um, But yeah, it's kind of whatever I feel like in the moment. I haven't really planned it out. That is awesome. And you know what? I'm looking forward to chatting with you and talking about it along the way. So obviously we know you love section hiking. We know you have this YouTube channel. And before I let you go, I kind of alluded to it um, in my intro that you are going to be coming back and doing some co-hosting with me. So part of the purpose of this episode was to get the listeners um, to kind of know who you are and uh, get them over to uh, start watching your videos over on YouTube at RVA Hiker Girl. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. Now, I love watching the videos for the hiking, but I also love watching the videos for the food that you cook at night and the drinks. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, that's <laughs> Everybody's going to have to go over there for that because this girl throws down on some food and some drinks. So talk to us a little bit about your YouTube and maybe what we could expect in the future. Sure. So basically my channel is for sure, all of my section hikes that I do, I really started the channel to provide information for other people as a resource. Like I said, I went on YouTube and did a lot of research and found a lot of great information. So I really have always wanted to be a resource for other people whether it is a day hike or it's a section hike or a Virginia State Park, because I'm currently doing the 41 state challenge of going to hike around all Virginia State Parks. Oh, my goodness. We but, didn't even talk about that. So, that- <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, I need another challenge, right? But I also really enjoy camping. And so when I go out car camping, whether it is uh, car camping, whether it's tent camping, 
uh, or even staying in a cabin, I really enjoy cooking. And that's what I think you were alluding to just a little bit ago. I love cooking in a Dutch oven over the fire. I love making cocktails and coming up with themed cocktails. And let me tell uh, you guys, she the does. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so over on my channel, you'll see all of that information. And you know, I'll do some, my favorite thing to do is hiking videos, but I will do every once in a while some, some recipes like um, my favorite ramen recipe, or, you know, I really don't do gear reviews. There's so many people that do that sort of thing. And I don't think anybody needs to see me doing too much of a gear review. Um, I think gear is highly individualized anyway, and I, I think it's different for everybody. And anyone who tells you you should have a certain piece of the gear, you need to turn that channel off and go listen <laughs> exactly. to another channel. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the channel, I, it really has turned into something that I just love doing. I love making videos. I love the creative aspect of it. I'm a huge music lover, so you'll always hear some sort of music that I have that I have picked out that, you know, really makes me feel what I felt like in that moment. And really, I've started this year, um, being my third year of having the channel, I've really kind of shifted gears a little bit with some of the things that I've wanted to do. Um, the number one question that I always get on my YouTube channel and across all of my social media is people asking me about solo information about, you know, do I feel safe being a solo hiker? What do they need to know to be a solo hiker? Or what should I tell my spouse? Because I want to go out by myself. What should I say? So I'm really starting to hone in and, and I really want to address some of those issues. Uh, well, don't give year. it all away because you're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, listen, I think it's great. And, and I cut you off. I, I do apologize on that because, uh, like I said, you are going to be coming back and we mm -hmm. are going to be speaking specifically um, uh, about hiking solo, um, some of those fears, uh, some of those questions that people ask. And I'm excited about it. I'm I really excited about it. I mean, the first time RVA and I that we talked on the phone, you guys, it was like two and a half hours. Oh, for sure. And we could have kept talking. <laughs> I mean, the ideas that were coming out and I love it. And you guys will notice, um, I mean, I'm in the third year of the podcast and I'm having these great conversations with co-hosts and I love it. I love people that are out, you know, creating content and you know, promoting section hiking and, you know, you've made it a lifestyle, which is awesome. Thank you. And you brought Jaybird along with you. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, you're going to be back uh, here in a few weeks. And um, now it's your turn to close out the show. So this is the question I always ask at the end. We've learned a little bit about you. The listeners are going to find out more about you. So what do you want to leave us with for this episode? Sure. So as a kid, I mentioned I loved going out barefoot. And I love the way that that felt back then. And, you know, I can't go out and hike every single week. But I do something uh, quite often that kind of helps give me a little dose of what I am missing when I'm in the real world and working and in life. And that is, I go outside in the grass and I take off my shoes and I just walk barefoot, whether it's this time of the year in the winter, whether it's in the summer when it's warmer, and I just walk around and I get that connection to the ground and to the grass, to the planet. And I think it gives me just a little dose of what I get when I go out there on a long hike. So I would encourage you that if you're feeling a little bit stressed or you haven't been out on your hike or been outside in a little bit, go outside, take off your shoes, go out by yourself or do it with your family or, or your friends. And they might think you're crazy, but I guarantee <laughs> you, you're going to love it. It is so de-stressing and it just feels so good. And when you come back in, sometimes I feel like a new person. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and hope maybe you will try it and let me and Julie know if you did and how you liked it. Exactly. All right, our RVA hiker girl, you'll be back. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, loved it. Thank you, Julie. 
Well, as you all heard, I think RVA Hiker Girl is giving me a run for my money when it comes to loving the Appalachian Trail. RVA will be back on the show here in a few weeks as a guest co-host as we chat more about overcoming our fears on the trail. I think you'll find our conversation about that topic very engaging as we both share fears of our own that we've encountered and learned how to overcome. As always, you can go to hikingradionetwork.com and click on the Jester Section Hiker Show to find all of today's show notes, pictures, and links mentioned in this episode. If you find value in what we do here at the network and want to give back to help in the production of our shows, you could always leave a donation by clicking on any one of the donate buttons found on our website. And be sure to leave us a note on why you enjoy our shows. Thanks for listening, be safe out there, and happy section hiking. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me And I'll spread the word We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods Head over the river and through the woods You're wondering if I go wandering with you What kind of trouble We'll get ourselves into Would it be wrong to tag along With a band of vagabonds You wonder if I'd wander with you So I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the troops And get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray The music of the pack can always bring you back I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum Round up the truth Get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets In these neighborhoods Head over the river And through the woods Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com/get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.